On October 30th, 2018, I was out on a walk. More of a ramble, really. I didn't really have a designated route. And I found myself in the Haltane area of Saskatoon. And that's when I saw it for the first time. It looked like this glowing monument sitting there in the darkness. You know, it really did happen exactly like this. I was standing right here and it stopped me dead in my tracks. I have rarely been stopped by a building like this before. It felt like a UFO had just landed in front of me. The lights shining out of the reading room just totally caught me off guard. And I was obsessed with the building ever since. Ever since that night, I couldn't stop thinking about that library and how I had never been inside of it before or even knew of its existence, which maybe says a little bit more about me, but still, I was completely stunned by the architecture of this building. It falls into a category I love, which is mid-century modern design, and this fit the bill in a way that left me speechless. There are so many components to this building that caught my eye. Minimal ornamentation, asymmetrical compositions, the vaulted overhang, the low angled roof, the beams, the brick, the stone, the corner glass. So I wanted to learn more about this library, so I went back to take out a book on a little bit of the history of this branch, but when I got inside, I was completely blown away with how everything looked on the inside. buildings like this because when you step inside you step into the time period that they were built and it's one of the powers that architecture can have. You walk inside the library and the first thing you see are these beautiful breeze bricks. I'm not sure why but I have a fascination with these simple blocks that just say so much about the architecture of the building. There was just so many features inside the library to take a look at. The grid drop down ceiling the massive vaulted ceiling and just the simplicity of the building is phenomenal. This is absolutely one of my favorite features in this library, this line of glass blocks. On the outside of the building, they sit along the ground and you wouldn't even notice them. But the light that they provide for this stairwell is incredible. And it's the definition of mid-century modern in that it's bringing the outdoors indoors in the most minimal way possible. You know, it's easy to overlook buildings like this, but the simplicity of this building really is the ethos of mid-century modern architecture. You know, when you look out into that reading room, it feels like you're sitting outside. The gap between indoors and outdoors is almost entirely eliminated by the floor to ceiling windows. The reading room also reminds me of a specific case study house, number 22, the stall house. Now that's an extreme example of how you're literally cantilevered over the canyon. But I think when you're in that reading room, you get that same effect, you feel like you're outside, you feel like you're part of the environment and the bright and warm energy that that room gives off. That's why I love mid-century modern architecture and that's why I love the JS Wood Branch. So I wanted to learn more about this building. So I thought I would start with the name on the side, James Stewart Wood. Who is that? Now luckily, there was this incredible book that was written in conjunction with the 100 year anniversary of the Saskatoon Public Library Turning Back the Pages, written by Ruth Miller. And look, there he is, James Stewart Wood. He was the chief librarian for 23 years. Wood's life was this long and winding road that eventually led him to Saskatoon. But what I found most intriguing about Wood 
was his pursuit of writing, reading, and his committed participation in the world of books. For example, he was the librarian of the college he attended in York, England for four years, right up until he joined the British Army for World War I. And while he was fighting the war, he wrote these incredibly detailed and lengthy logs of his experience, which included trench warfare in France. You know, moving on from that, like Wood eventually found himself in Prince Albert, where he started a book club, he revived the public library system there, and he also started moonlighting as a book reviewer for CBC. This eventually led him to Saskatoon, where he became the chief librarian here, and he had a massive cultural impact on the library system during his time. This included the start of the music library in 1939. He also saw the SPL through World War II, where he made a great effort to make sure any soldier that was stationed here had proper reading materials. Wood also happens to be the one who hired some of the most influential people we've had in the SPL system, including Francis Morrison, Alice Turner, and Mary Donaldson. But this leads me back to the J.S. Wood branch. This branch is Wood's most tangible legacy, which remains a mecca for residents in the neighborhood. In fact, Wood produced his own conceptual drawings of what he thought the branch should be. Unfortunately, Wood would not see this vision come to life. J.S. Wood died on April 29th, 1961, five months before the branch opened to the public. J.S. Wood, Bookman. However, it was not the name on the building that got me so interested in the first place. It was the building itself. So I had more work to do. Who was the architect? Who was the designer of this building? So the first thing you do is you type in JS Wood into the local history online database and see what you find. And there it was. Webster, Forrester, and Scott, architects. But specifically, George Forrester was the architect. I got more work to do.